Hello everyone, this is Mr. Wolf, and we are reading the final chapter of Fred Korematsu Speaks Up. This is written by Laura Atkins and Stan Yogi, illustrated by Yutaka Hallett, and published by Heyday Books. In the description below, you can find a link to where you can purchase your own copy of Fred Korematsu Speaks Up. And I'm so excited to be reading this with you today, because it is January 30th, which is Fred Korematsu's birthday. He would be 102 today. And here in California, it is Fred Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution. So what better day to finish Fred Korematsu Speaks Up? And we are on to Chapter 12, Making the Case, 1983. Fred and Catherine pushed through a blustery wind to enter the tall federal court building near San Francisco's City Hall. In the courtroom, Every seat is filled with people who have waited since eight in the morning to come in. Japanese Americans, some who lived in the prison camps, are crowded onto benches anywhere there is a seat. When Fred first went to court, many of these people thought he was wrong to challenge the government. They turned their back on Fred. Now they think differently. Fred isn't alone anymore. But what will the judge decide? The lawyers speak, and then Fred, Fred rises to stand before the judge. If he loses, he will let so many people down. His voice is soft but firm. Your Honor, I still remember 40 years ago when I was handcuffed and arrested as a criminal. We can never forget this incident as long as we live. The horse stalls that we stayed in were made for horses, not human beings. As long as my record stands in federal court, any American citizen can be held in prison or concentration camp without a trial or hearing, that is, if they look like the enemy of this country. Therefore, I would like to see the government admit that they were wrong and do something about it. So this will never happen again to any American citizen of any race creed, or color. Judge Patel shuffles her papers. It feels like there is electricity in the air. The walls almost vibrate with the silence in the room. Then she speaks in complicated legal language that Fred doesn't understand. He turns to one of his lawyers and asks, what happened? Fred, you won. You won your case. Fred is quiet. Then he says, that's good. That's really good. People crowd around Fred, crying and laughing, shaking his hand and giving him hugs. In 1942, when Fred sat alone in a jail cell, he never dreamed that 40 years later he would be congratulated as a hero. Fred challenged something he thought was unfair. He spoke up for himself and for all Japanese Americans, even when no one stood with him. That was not easy, but Fred fought to make the United States, his country, a fairer place. And he won. We all won. Fred's Fight for Justice Judge Marilyn Hall Patel agreed with Fred's lawyers. The government's lawyers had lied to the United States Supreme Court. They did not have evidence that there was a military necessity to imprison Japanese Americans. She overturned Fred's conviction for not reporting to, the, to prison camp. It was an important victory, not just for Fred, but also for Japanese Americans and all Americans. Finally, a judge had ruled that it was wrong for the government to force Japanese Americans out of their homes and lock them up. Now it would be harder in the future for the government to put people behind barbed wire just because they looked like the enemy. Many Japanese Americans had changed their minds about Fred in the 40 years since World War II. Over time, they realized that questioning the government's actions did not make them disloyal to, the country, to their country. They recognized how brave and determined Fred had been. We have two photographs. We have a photograph of Judge Marilyn Hall Patel, 
and Fred and his friend and ally, Ernest Bessig, in 1989. And a question that you can answer in the comments below, how can one person, with help, with help from allies, make a difference? Fred had finally won his case in court, but his work was not done. Fred hoped that government officials would never again unfairly target any group like that they had targeted Japanese Americans during World War II, but he knew it could happen again. So Fred traveled across the United States to talk to people about what the government had done to Japanese Americans and about his experience fighting that injustice. He spoke to hundreds of people, young and old, including students, teachers, and government leaders. On January 15, 1988, President Bill Clinton honored Fred Korematsu with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award for an American. Later, Fred told Karen he wished his parents could have been there. After receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom, Fred continued to speak up. His message was, do not let what happened to Japanese Americans happen to anyone else. He told his listeners, you always have to watch out about protecting your rights. After September 11th, 2001, Fred's message became even more important. Early that morning, terrorists from Middle Eastern countries crashed planes into the World Trade Center towers in New York City. Thousands of people died. Americans were shocked and afraid, just like they had been after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Back then, people turned against Japanese Americans because they looked like the enemy. In 2001, many Americans turned against immigrants and Americans of Middle Eastern ancestry because they looked like the terrorists. Fred spoke up against this unfairness. No one should ever be locked away simply because they share the same race, ethnicity, or religion as a spy or terrorist, he said. Fred learned that the United States government had imprisoned hundreds of Middle Eastern men without giving them trials. After these men asked the United States Supreme Court to give them a chance to prove their innocence, Fred supported them. Fred spent the rest of his life speaking up for the rights of others and fighting for justice for all people. He died on March 30th, 2005. We have a vocabulary word, terrorist, a person who uses terror or violence to scare people into change. And we have some photographs. Fred shaking hands with President Bill Clinton, who told him it was a very brave thing you did to stand up against the government. Five years after Fred won his case, Japanese American activists convinced the government to pass the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. The United States government publicly apologized, admitting that imprisoning innocent Japanese Americans was wrong. This law also provided a reparations payment of $20,000 to each Japanese American still living who had been imprisoned during World War II. Fred and Catherine worked with hundreds of other activists to get this law passed. The World Trade Center burning after the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. And finally, Fred Korematsu, 1919 to 2005. And we have our last timeline. November 10, 1983, Judge Patel overturns Fred's conviction. August 10, 1988, Civil Liberties Act is passed. January 15, 1998, President Clinton awards Fred the Presidential Medal of Freedom. September 11, 2001, World Trade Center is attacked. March 30, 2005, Fred dies. Speaking up for justice, from Fred's day to ours. How can you be like Fred and speak for what you think is right? 
When you look around your school or your community, do you see people being treated badly? When you watch the news or read the newspapers, do you learn about situations that don't seem fair or right? Fred made the choice to speak up against unfairness. He took a lot of risks in speaking up. He also found allies who helped him along the way. In the end, Fred helped to make the United States a fairer place for everyone. We all make choices, and these choices can be important. We can speak up when we see something that isn't fair, or when someone else is being treated badly. Anyone, big or small, loud or quiet, young or old, can speak up. We can speak up through our actions or our words, to one person or to many. And we can all make a difference in our family, in our school, in our community, and in our world. Ideas for Young Activists Kids are often the first to see when something isn't fair or right, and can come up with exciting ideas and creative actions. Once you've found an issue that is important to you, here are some ideas for next steps that you can take. Get information. Is there a person or group of people who are being treated badly? Is there a rule that seems unfair? Is there someone in a position to change things for the better? Read more about the topic. Research the situation so you feel that you really understand it. Be clear about the kind of change you'd like to see. Talk about it. Talk to the people around you about what you've learned. This could include your family, your friends, your family, your teachers, and your classmates. Start a discussion and gather ideas about what you and your friends can do. Take action. There are lots of different ways to speak up. Here are just a few ideas. Create a group to meet regularly and come up with plans to address your issue. It can be fun to work together. Organize a letter writing campaign to someone who has the power to make a difference in your community. This could be the head of a company or an elected official who helps to make laws. Raise money to fund an organization that is fighting for this change you want to see. Sell cookies, make crafts, run a lemonade stand. These are just a few examples. And be sure to spread the word about why you are raising money. Come up with your own creative solutions. Think about what you like to do and figure out a way to combine that with speaking up and fighting for change. If you like to sing or dance, put on a play with your friends to raise awareness. If you are artistic, create something that speaks to the issue you care about, then display it at your school or post it online. If you play a sport, organize a sporting event with your issue as the theme. The sky is the limit. Organize a Fred Korematsu Day event at your school and turn the page to learn more. And I'm going to have a link to the page because I don't know if I have that page on this slideshow. Share your progress. Let people know about your challenges and successes. You can create a blog or website or write to your local newspaper. People will want to know what you have achieved. You can inspire them to know that they can make a difference too. And there are some resources in these websites I have links to in the description below. Here are some websites where you can learn more about your rights and ways to take action around issues that matter to you. iCivics. Founded by former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, iCivics has tons of online resources for kids who want to learn about government, law, and our rights as citizens play fun animated games, and see how you stack up among students across the country. ACLU. In the Know Your Rights section, you can learn about the rights all Americans have, and also about, the, about groups who are facing discrimination. 
This can help you to know when your rights or the rights of others are being violated. Do something. This is one of the largest global organizations supporting young people and social change. The site allows you to select the kind of issue you want to address, how much time you have, and the type of activism you want to engage in. And finally, inspire my kids. Looking for more ideas? This site features kids who are making a difference in all kinds of places, in all kinds of ways. You can explore by values, topics, subjects, and age range. There's plenty of food for thought on ways to change the world. So that is the end of the book Fred Korematsu Speaks Up. There is some more stuff, which is another reason why you really, really, really should go into the description below and purchase your own copy of Fred Korematsu Speaks Up. But I have been, it has been a real honor and pleasure to read this with all of you. And I hope you all have a happy and productive Fred Korematsu Day of civil, of civil liberties in the Constitution.